<laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to this very special edition of Big Head Pod, Harps Court, Suds with Luds, The Mom Game. Yes, it is us, the Dub Network, here in all of our glory. We're hanging Give it up out. For the dub. <laughs> Give it up for the Dub. Give it up. We're Give hanging it out at the Herman Marshall Tasting Room here in downtown Wiley. Um, we've talked about it a lot on all of our shows, and this is my first time here. This is amazing. I absolutely love it. Guys, what are y'all's first impressions of this spot, of the whiskey? Is it a dream come true? I'll go whiskey first, absolutely. Okay. And whatever Minch is having, I have. He hadn't led me astray yet. Minch, what are you uh, having, Minch? Single malt. Okay. Single Which malt. is, I had to, I'm not sharing this ever. So anybody <laughs> else, yes, this is the one I will not share. I've made it abundantly clear. It's good. Yes. Uh -huh. So it's, it is definitely the top of the line for me. And Leds, you've been here before. You really broke it in, I heard. Well, I think Benchy and I got kicked out of here. Oh, the, good. The no, first we, time we were here. No, we orders. just we just ran out of food down the street. I think oh. there was so much <laughs> yeah, we, alcohol consumption here. that night. I think uh, what was your pedometer, Ryan? About fifteen miles that night. You guys put on making drinks and everything else <laughs> opening night. So no, it was fun for sure. This is awesome. Herman Marshall is one of our um, biggest and best partners. We couldn't do what we're doing on the Dub Network without them. We want to bring on Ryan and Clint here uh, briefly. Yeah. This is Ryan. Briefly. Yeah, briefly. And they're, we, the, they're the guys that are paying the money. They can talk yeah. as long as they yeah, want. Exactly. But I did tell you guys Take before this show. You, you, you don't want us talking you that long. I'll tell you that. Hey, I'll stand up next year. I you did can tell have you guys before we started, I have a couple of goals for this show. I know it's going to be wheels off. I hope that we can get out of here without too many F-bombs. Um, oh, fuck that. <laughs> I do want to drink a lot of whiskey, and I do want to get to a couple sports topics with you guys that are like really things that I want to know, and I have some experts here. But before we get to those sports to topics, let's talk a little bit about the whiskey with Clint and Ryan, guys. Yeah. Thank you so much for having us. First of you all, know Clint was a do we have a no, ball state athlete, by the way? Of course, of course, <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> of course. Ball state. Clint, all, all, all state. Yeah. 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 All state. Right. Turn Luddy's mic off. Um, <laughs> Ryan, first of all, just tell us a little bit about how this all came to be for you guys, um, the brand, and of course this tasting room. It has to feel so good to have it all done oh, and to absolutely. be sitting here with all of these people. It's amazing. You know, it, it, whenever it was at the time that we both got a call from a buddy going, "Hey, you want to buy a whiskey distillery?" Uh -huh. We're like, "Yes." Well, I wasn't. I was like, "No, a, I need a, a numbers guy." He didn't even know what we were buying. So. I, I was ready, you know. <laughs> and so, like, actually getting to see it come to fruition, where we're like, "Hey, this is a actual place where people can come and drink." Uh -huh. It's amazing. Yeah. And then the distillery right now, you're about halfway done, but we're already starting to produce and. So we're really, really excited for what we're doing here and then really for the city of Wiley. Yeah, no I have a quick question. Yes, yeah. sir. Has anything taken you by surprise? A billion things. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, just, just uh, well, number one, just construction in general. That's fun, yeah. right? Yeah. So um, but I would say just the willingness and openness, you know, for the city of Wiley and a lot of the people that are local to Texas mm -hmm. that are so excited to see the brand really come back to life. Is because it is this dry in this area? It is so dry. It's, yeah, yeah. Well, it, damp. Da yeah, they call it damp. Um, li there's <laughs> no liquor stores, <laughs> which would be wet. You like the more dry would be nothing. Easy. So it's moist. Easy. easy on the right. I like moist so. <laughs> better. Yeah. That's a reach around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he went there. This is where it goes off the rails. He's going to go there. He's going to go there. Oh, no. I'm just, I'm just I, I learned that real fast with lots Did stuff. you have any problems with that? No. You know what? Sorry, they, No, you're good. This is they were forum. They were wide open to have us coming here. Mm -hmm. So that was the biggest and most fun part. You know, number one, no, no, not as much for Clint, but I get a seven-minute drive with one stoplight. Amazing. Yeah. But on the other side, Wiley's been so wide open to have us come in and then having this historic tasting room that was built in the early 1900s, it's just a really cool vibe. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Clint, what were y'all's goals when you were looking at, you know, the right place to have the tasting room? <laughs> the goals of how you kind of wanted it to feel, what you wanted to have go on in this space, and has it has it reached that point? So when we, Ryan and I, you know, obviously we mentioned construction, we got the, the delay after delay after delay. I was actually outside, I was out in Longview, and, uh, you know, the city called us and was like, hey, you know, there's a, a property, you got to look at it today, though. So he called me, he's like, hey, Clint, hey, I need you to meet me in Wiley. Well, I live outside of Canton, I'm, I'm out meeting with reps in, in Longview. I said, man, I'm, you know I'm in Longview. He's like, all right, well, I, I told him, I said, go look at it. 
So then he called me about an hour later. He's like, man, you need to get here now. We got to move on it. And I'm like, man, I trust you. Do you want it? And I, he goes, absolutely. I said, all right, let's pull the trigger. He goes, good, because I've already signed the contract. <laughs> and I mean, but that, that, that's the level of communication and trust that we have with each other. You know, uh -huh. we didn't, we didn't, when that's we bought the company, it's yeah. a fantastic partnership. And when we bought the company, we didn't know each other from Adam. I mean, our, our third partner introduced us to each other. And I mean, now it's, we're yin and yang. I mean, he's my strengths. He, you know, <clears throat> I fill in with his weaknesses and vice versa. You know, my weaknesses, you know, I throw so much stuff over the fence to him, and it's it's been magical. It really what, has been a good ride. What have you guys worked out with food wise? Okay, so that was the other thing. I told him from day one. I will. I've been in the restaurant business before. I said I'll never be in the restaurant business again. So what we've actually done for our tasting room is we've partnered with some local businesses. You know, all right here in downtown uh, Wiley. And what you can do is just scan if you want tacos and oh, your cool. wife yeah, wants yeah. a I'm brisket sandwich you, yeah. okay. you scan it and they'll just deliver it right I'll over here i'll scan it make uh, sure same thing with the future facility um <laughs> what, we have uh, three food truck hookups <laughs> hungry and yeah, then yeah. we have two partnerships in place with the restaurants over there so oh, cool. never wanted to be in the restaurant business but we realized you know and it's been great you know for our local uh businesses <laughs> what it's done for their sales and really bringing you know, just downtown Ballard alive. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just been fantastic. And I know y'all have more plans, like a lot of plans. I love how many plans you guys have when it comes to um, the different liquor that you're going to be producing and selling and serving, as well as the new distillery. What's the deal with that? Is it coming soon? So the distillery right now about halfway done. Yep. Um, we've already started producing vodka. So uh -huh. we have vodka here now. So, I mean, you know, Cheers. we have some. There we go. Got my little <laughs> Oh, and then here, here in the one next one few weeks, you we're going to have, I don't have a little gin. I like, I'm, I'm, I'm a double fisted guy. Where's my vodka? Well, you know what? Let us, we, we no, know. I'll just get you a shot paddle. We know after some we're people. Done. When Ryan and I are done, I'll bring you a shot paddle. What? Okay, so vodka and you said yeah. gin. And then gin and rum are right around the corner, yeah. too. So we're going to have kind of a little bit of everything. When you come to the tasting room, you know, you can try it all. Uh -huh. Literally two or three drinks of everything, right, Lugs? Well, and I'm wondering when Harp's going to throw in, do you have any cigars here? Yeah. Well, you know what? That <laughs> We're going to have a patio. We're going to have all of that associated where you can do a tasting with a cigar. So we're going to have all that good stuff. And, and over at the main facility, I just actually learned about this Saturday, uh, one of the local businesses, businesses over there are going to put in a humidor. Okay. So we can't sell cigars um, out of our facility. You can bring your own, but there'll be one next to the main distillery and tasting room that'll be over there. Right with a full humidor. I'm curious to whether or not that's common to mix, you know, Absolutely. the whiskey bar. Well, and yeah. It's okay to bring in Oh, 100%. double fisted. Well, yeah, yeah, you can you can I'll they let you do whatever law, you want. Right? It's a law, it's a what do you call it? the law that they <laughs> the passed sipping law. It's the sipping law here in mm -hmm. Wyoming. Gotcha. They changed it where you can so, walk around. Yeah, you well, can walk that? around oh, downtown. You yeah, mm -hmm. if you and drink. what's nice is we have a trifecta. Oh. So we have Landon's on the corner, Landon's Winery. Um, the Glen Echo Brewing is actually going right behind us. And then, of course, we have our tasting room here. Yeah. And so what Wiley saw was, all right, let's pass like this law. That way my wife can go get a glass of wine. I can have my bourbon. I can go down. I can walk down with, with my bourbon down there, hang on with my wife, or she can bring her wine down here. Mm. And when the brewery opens behind us, literally the trifecta for downtown, it's going to be something really unique for Is this community. Is there any community. realtors you know we could uh, Love is moving here? Love is already putting in. <laughs> Perfect. I got a house right down the street. You can come be a neighbor. <laughs> oh, be, oh, be careful. <laughs> yeah. Be careful. Yeah. Oh, you can just have his kids bunk. <laughs> yeah. We can put bunk can beds in out. his room. It'll so. be good. So for people who might be watching and want to come out here to the tasting room, I know you guys have a lot of fun events, like almost every night of the week. Sometimes you have some live music. What all is going on that they should come see? Yeah, so we have live music Friday and Saturday nights. We also do a poker night, which is totally free. You come in, you can play poker upstairs. We have a whole area upstairs, which is great for poker. And then actually here in the next week or two, we're going to be starting trivia on oh, Tuesday. Nice. So we'll have it all going here. And really, it's just another place downtown and around Wiley and out here that you can come hang out, have a drink, see good friends, maybe watch a game, but you can also do a lot of fun activities. Yeah. And especially like on Wednesday. So, you know, existing businesses like Landon, they have Wine Down Wednesdays. Well, we do Whiskey Wednesdays. So or some might call it husband babysitting. Husband babysitting. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a lot of that. Our, I think your wife and I, my wife would definitely agree on that husband uh -huh. babysitting. So 
And then the the wives, the moms can go to the wine thing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. something for everybody I here. I, I love. I've seen Katie leave this facility yet. <laughs> True. <laughs> She's a hard worker. I do love this. Yeah. No, I I've loved getting to know all of you guys and Ryan and Katie, and it's like the whole family business vibe. You guys have young kids. You said you can even bring kids here. Oh, I know I have oh, because yeah. I have a seven year old and a four year old. I will bring them here. I will make Luddy leave if I bring my kids here. But I just I, I just love everything. That you guys are doing. <laughs> what are you laughing? Why are you laughing? At? Why do you laugh at that? Kids and make somebody leave. <laughs> yeah. But I bring people with me. <laughs> big no, people. I yeah. do. I love it. Very, big, 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 very, very big people. <laughs> um, it's a really cool spot. We love uh, that we're getting the opportunity to work with you guys. Thank you so much for trusting Dub Network to help spread the word. I know you guys have a lot going on. We have a full house here tonight and probably some drinks to go be had. So Speaking thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, Speaking of drinks. Cheers. Cheers. Um, yeah. We'll get you a new one. Yeah, we'll get you a whole fly. Thank y'all. So cool. We really are so grateful for their partnership here on the Dub Network and just the way this whole thing has come together, you guys, with all of the shows, with the sponsors. Aren't we having fun? Did you I'm think that it might to, ever like, get to this point? Apparently, you on Parade because he's looking at it. Uh, no. <laughs> Finally, you're going to say something. You haven't said nothing the first 10 minutes. I didn't get a chance to. Which is weird. I know. He, it's he, awesome. He can dish it and he can take it. I know that about him. Like, we were it. talking about nachos, ordering food. We're hungry. Yeah. That well, part. get on your app. Did I you did. not listen? Harp's got Order. it. I'm what on. I would like to know, Julie. Yeah, sure. Not let's. to throw this thing off the rails since we're talking about. It's already about, off the rails. We're good. We're Dallas Stars wise. Yeah. Your husband, Kelly. Yeah. He's one of the smartest guys down there in the room with the video stuff. He is. Wouldn't this be a great place to have. Um, like a stars watching event going Ooh, on. Ooh, that's a great not, idea. Not a well, stars nice. watching party because we know that they do their things there and they have their locations. Yeah. But we we could should do something have some sort of stars here. watching party here. That's a very we good could, point. We could Lutz. do something like that. Yeah. Not Mavs, and we can I, I was just going to go Mavs. I mean, shucks. Yeah. See? Well, you guys, you guys broached the subjects. So we have. Um, some experts of the game here with us. Uh, Harp, you were just on the call. I, I, I mean, last night. Don't use that. Yeah, so loosely, that right? Stuff. You are. You are. <laughs> yeah, are we, no, you guys played like fools yeah, like me sit here and talk about sports all day on the radio, but you guys played the dang games, and I love that you offer a perspective that other people cannot offer. Yeah. So yeah. I, as a fan of these teams, have some questions for you guys. You probably know on, what Julie, my questions on, are. Yeah. Harp. Are the Mavs going to be okay um, with Kyrie in the <clears> fold <throat> now? I I personally knew it was going to take some time yeah, for to things to gel, yeah, um, but I didn't think they would be losing the games. I thought maybe they'd yeah. find a way to pull off some wins, especially against teams that aren't so good along the way. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the whole <laughs> you, you know, I, I, situation? I would not reveal, actually, more than anything. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely under oath. Yeah. You, you, you better believe that with, with Cube and the game, Nico. You know, I think one of the, the most unique things about sports is that continuity is one of the most difficult things to bring together. Yeah. It, it, it seems like, oh, Kyrie Irving, he's great. Luca's great. You throw it out there. And it's a, it's a fit. It's a match. It's a, it, it's something that's going to last forever. But when you don't have the, pro and it has to be organic. Let me say that too. It can't be forced where I'm trying to get along with Lugs. I'm trying to get along with Kevin. It has to work from that perspective. And they play five games together. Yeah. That's not enough time. That's a very small sample size, if you would. Yep. So you need more time. And unfortunately for the NBA, the trade de deadline is not the halfway point. It's yeah. about 19 games left. So this just took place. And plain and simple, it's going to take some time for uh, for the Mavericks to um, to Gel. find themselves. Yeah. Gel, whatever you want to call it. I, I, I think there's some indecisiveness with Luka and Kyrie late in games. That's, you, know? you can see it. Yeah, yeah. Stevie Wonder can. Excuse me. No, no point in, intended. <laughs> but... You can see it. You can feel it, Juice. You know what yeah. I mean? It's just not – they're just not tied together right now, and I think that's where coaching comes in. I love Jay Kidd, but he's he he's in for it. He, this is the challenge of his coaching career. Does coaching come in, or do those two guys have to get together themselves? At some, you know, ball is ball. I, I don't think it takes a lot of getting together. I don't know how it, how it is in, in hockey, but – Basketball is different, man. You, if you can play, Kyrie has played with Kevin Durant. 
He's also played with LeBron James. So he has a feel for, for what it's about playing with another star. Yeah. I think the biggest challenge is Luka. Yeah. Luka didn't sleep well last night because Kyrie got the opportunity to take the last shot. Yeah. And we have seen Luka make the same shot that Kyrie took last night. I've seen seen uh, Luka Magic come up with some magic and make those those kind of plays happen. So is, didn't is get this the opportunity last night. Is this time. an ego thing? Is it egos? I, is it an ego? Of course, of course there's ego involved. I mean, we all, as as athletes, we, we all have. I don't know a lot about basketball. Too many, That's I get too not, many. not to the point, though, where you disrespect. You understand? Yeah. I, I don't think either – Either of these guys are going to disrespect the other, but there is going to be like, you take it. No, I'll take it. You take it. That's where coaching comes in. You know that. To uh, to be decisive in what you want late in the game. The it rapport was, that's built. So, it's, yes. it's not built in five days, right? Of, of five course days. Not. It's got to be something that evolves. You, you but, know what? If Jalen Brunson was still here, uh-huh. those things would have been easier because they know each other. They're familiar with familiar with each other, and it's easier said than done Yeah. as yeah. far as continuity is concerned. I think people think it's an automatic switch that goes on, goes off. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. you, you got to so, I'm going to play as, as a fan, watching, yeah. knowing, because we read papers, right? We athletes read the papers. We still make papers? Craig can't, I don't, can't they, read, but, but, but I don't think they make but, papers but, anymore, but, by the way, man. Let's have someone that he's what hired paper? someone to read to him. Yeah, she's <laughs> sitting right back there. <laughs> <laughs> lucky you. <laughs> yeah, no shit. But guys, guys, word goes around lucky. the leagues, right, about what guys are, how they are as teammates, right? They're what we they're read known the papers. For. What is and that you, all and about? you hear that. Don't you know what he means? Yeah. It, right? So you, you see that. And I remember as soon as I saw the trade, you see the, the New Jersey, New York newspaper saying, hey, good luck. Right? Yeah. Patting them back on it. No, Hanging out with Kyrie. Yeah. 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 So, so players, people, they they see that. Kids, especially the younger generation, they're all about. They're all over social media. So that that kind of talk happens. Right, so do you think that as soon as that happened, that the first thought for Luca was, "Oh shit." Yes. What? What? I mean, as what, far as just as a fan, what do you think that is going through Luca's mind at this at that at that moment? Luca's twenty four, so I don't have any fucking idea. What, <laughs> <laughs> he's twenty four years old. I don't have any idea what Luca, what Luca is thinking. It's not what uh, Kyrie is thinking. I, love you know what I, mean? yeah. I, I, I don't. I, I don't. You don't have a clue. Kyrie is aloof. I, I do. Just from my perspective, this is not something I heard from anybody else, but I think he's aloof from the standpoint of, well, aloof, bipolar, not not bipolar, but he 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 walks to his own beat. Yeah, and that's a lot difficult. Of beat walks to- I don't I don't think there's any way in in the world that Kyrie is going to go to Luca and say, "Hey, man, let's do this. Let's do this together." Kyrie is more looking at it like, "Okay, you you." You're a star, I'm a star. Let's go out here and mesh okay. it together and see how it works. It has me lear- worried a little bit what you said. So you don't think don't that. Don't worry, you're too young to worry. I worry don't about worry. the Mavericks. I do. Yeah. I worry about the Mavericks. I worry about yeah. the stars. I worry about the Cowboys. I worry about all these things that don't really matter in life, right. but I worry about them. Really I should don't. probably worry about my kids more. <laughs> but are you saying that Kyrie is not going to go up to Luca? that the two of them can't just sit down and talk through this thing? Man, like, gonna, hey, in this scenario, in a game, this is who needs the ball. I'm ready. Just, I got you. Pass it to Kyrie? me. Kyrie is 29 to 30. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so it's right? not. Like, you yeah. think they're not talking behind the scenes? Well, no, I'm not saying that they're not talking. I, you know, you guys know they're clicks in, in, in oh, sports. Oh, no. You know, they're baseball clicks. You didn't hang out with everybody. Yeah, oh, no. I was that guy. Okay, okay. Well, I was you, that guy. you pull things together. Yes. You don't hang out. Everybody doesn't hang out in the same crowd. Now, yeah. I'm sure they have had some conversations. Yeah. Just to kind of, you know, get on the same page, so to speak. But not to the point where it's like, okay, when this happens. But sports, the one thing about it, it's instinct. Yeah. It's not a plan all the time. I mean, you draw up plays late in the game, but you really have to play with your instincts. It's like playing in the schoolyard, right? That's exactly what it is. I Love. threw that in for you. I've been waiting for you to say that yeah, as a basketball well, analyst. <laughs> well, I thought I you'd throw that in. Good take, Led. NBA I, I am a basketball analyst. I know, but not but a very good the one. one thing, the, the, the one thing that I know is that egos come into play. Yeah. And Luca wants his shine. Kyrie wants his shine. Kyrie is playing for a contract, for crying out loud. 
So we'll, we'll but see. But he's got to win. He, he, no, not necessarily. You don't think so? He has contract. to win to get a contract? Well, to get a better contract. Get a deal. No, if you can join no. a team and help them win and reach a goal that they have no, as a no. group. I, he, he, he's going to make $200 million, period. Yeah, yeah. He's going to make sure. <laughs> this has been Luca's team. It's been built around Luca, right? It's right. Gone, and that's how it is. So now you're bringing a guy in who it's been kind of built around Kyrie. Granted, he's been you know, with KD and those guys in New Jersey. Yeah. Or Brooklyn, whatever, whatever is it. And then LeBron. So he's been around it. So he, you think Kyrie would be used to it knowing that you're playing with one of the top players in the league. Yeah. We can, hey, we can make this work. But yeah. like what Julie's saying. They need to have this conversation. Hey, you might not, yeah, I'm I'm not sure, like you, but we've got to figure it out to make I'm this team sure better. I'm sure Luke and, and Kyrie have had conversation. Yeah. There's no question about that. Yeah. But not to the extent that you guys are talking about. You right. guys are trying They're to. They're not like drying up plays you guys at night are before to make they go to bed. Buddies. But like, can They're you at least get them to the up plays and that, So doesn't. So do, do it, you see, listen, listen. Do you see how now that Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan don't play together anymore? Do you think they're best buds? They no. don't. Michael Jordan's son is dating. Yeah, that's weird. It's that's weird as heck, but that's what weird. I'm telling you that you you want to think that, oh, yeah, we love each other. We this, we that. It, that, that. it has to be organic, and that's not organic, but what, what you guys are, are talking about. You, look, you, you're saying, oh, come to my house tonight. I'll come to your house tomorrow. No, I, you, know where I, you know where I, I put it? Go, I, I, like I put that. it at the feet of the ownership and, and the general manager to figure out, they can, can these guys so coexist? Yeah. I mean, isn't that part they of building a team going, we got two personalities here. Can can they coexist? And can they come together? It, maybe, because I know in our sport. Offensively, could, they have come together. Okay. Yeah, their offensive rating is off the charts right now. Yeah. But you got rid of Dorian Finney-Smith, so there's a hole defensively for this team. The last six games, I don't want to start talking numbers. I'm not necessarily that guy. But the last six games, teams, the Mavericks' opponents, have scored 62 points or more in the paint. That's underneath where you would be on the basketball court. So in some ways, yes. I, I'd but be other, at the bar. Other, <laughs> I'd other be, ways, I'd be not the There's no much. bar at the basketball court. Yeah. There's not? <laughs> You're used to the blue paint. I'd be in the old Stars You're used club. to the blue paint. You couldn't go yeah. into blue paint. Okay. Yeah, it's so to the you, house. You, you it's the house. You yep. can't buy continuity, man. You yeah. can't buy it. It just, just doesn't so work there's no, So from a, a GM standpoint in basketball, because I they don't look at that. Can They're this rolling guy, the dice, man. Oh, I you never right. know. Okay, I didn't. I didn't know if they kind of look into the you, chemistry you, of a couple of players well, coming yeah, together. You would think. I mean, you said it's going to take more time, but like I think that the ownership group probably hoped that this could click and work this you season. Said it. You right? said it. Hope. Yeah. Has it worked so far? No, but I think they're close. Close to what? Oh, no. Harp, you're supposed to build me up and make <laughs> no, me think I, that everything's no, going to be okay. You. Everything is going to be okay. You don't think I, everything's going to be okay is what I'm I hearing. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I think, like He's I said, skeptical. you roll the dice and you see. Yeah, I do roll the dice because I have seen two games come down to the last couple of seconds. Yeah. Yep. And the continuity and the cohesion just hasn't been what it needs to be. And, and, and basketball, all sports, it's a team sport. So whose team is it, Luka or Kyrie? Well, how do you think the rest of the team feels about that shit? You know, like throw know. Me, Tim Hardaway Jr. standing over there like, throw me the ball. I'll catch and make a shot. But it always comes, it can't come down. It can't be about one person. It has to be about everybody collectively. And that's the only way you're going to be successful if, if you're the Dallas Mavericks. Yeah. Because, you know, and then there's coaching. There's Jason Kidd that has to figure all Call of this out. Call a timeout every once in a while. Well, um, yeah. You, I, <laughs> hey, is that what you're Jay, looking for, Julie? I mean, Jason, uh, Jason you just threw a dart buddy. in there somewhere. That's my you're buddy. You're basically we saying you don't, you <laughs> don't coach. I think buddy. he's cool to hang out with, I, I guess, for Jay. the players, but I'm still uh, hey, the book is out. That's why he makes the book is out on Jason Kidd for me. That's why he makes the big bucks. He does. He really does. Yeah. And then the other day he says, He's a spectator. That, I mean. That's what he said. He He's said, I'm not a savior. I'm a spectator, just like you guys. Talking to media, talking to fans. Well, like, you're the coach. I can be a spectator. I can actually right. sip on this But you malt. should be working. Yeah. You should People be doing something. I don't know that's a problem. Somebody said, oh, I my gosh, he just said that. As a, 
yeah. understanding where They're it is. Basically, it's, it's the five guys in the court. My job is just to, to set you guys into place. You guys execute. He can't. It's, it's like being a parent and a kid. He can't go out and hold their hands. No, but, but you can do something. Some sort of ship steerage, yes. But at what point? It, James, he played. He played for a long time. He yeah. understands it. So game has changed. That's what I'm saying. That's the problem. It's, yeah, the it's game is different, changed. man. All of our sports have changed. Yeah, I mean, there, there, I know. there's so many changes when it comes to basketball. Um, okay, I want to get to stars because I have a question for you. But while we're on the coaching topic, uh, a manager, a coach, how involved did you guys want them in your day-to-day? -day, and how involved were they? Was there someone that really stands out that, you know, you really liked the back and forth that you had with them? Did you? Uh, what's your take on it? For between, all three of you. Between, as we had this discussion, uh, when it comes down to it, we don't want any part of the front office. Uh-huh. Is it want, coach front office? It's, you just don't. You, because the guys in the locker room. He's more front, they're more front office than they are with the players. Yes. We, the, with the guys in the locker room care about the guys in the locker room. We don't want to deal with the front office. Granted, they come in. It's, it, that's sacred. The, the locker rooms are kind of sacred ground for the athletes. That's, yeah. that's our area. When they come in, you, you can see there are guys, right? They come in. As soon as that general manager, somebody walks in that door, they look and know, and the atmosphere can change because of that's our, that's our family. Because that's when right. it comes down to it, bottom line, they're the, the athletes, the, the team guys care about themselves, the team together because that's their goal, the championship. Their job is the financial stuff, bringing the players in. That's we're not worried about who they're bringing this and that. We're worried about the guys that are there. How can we make what we have here work? Mm -hmm. And then they bring these other pieces in. That's the part of the of the coach to figure out. All right, we've got this new piece. How can we get that? And it's all it all varies between sports. You know, hockey, basketball, football, baseball. It all varies how the managers do that. But that's that's basically the main job I think as the managers figure out how can we get these pieces to work. Do you do you look at is baseball, I, I don't, and the wrong way to say it is a team sport, and I don't mean it like that, but you hit the ball, you catch the ball, you throw the ball. Damn. So he's really down. But, but, but you know what I'm saying? He's like, big on baseball, isn't he? No, but you but you know ball. what I'm but you know what I'm saying? You throw like, the ball. I don't look at it. I don't look at because I played for a long time and I love. I absolutely adore the sport, but I catch it. I got to pick it up and throw it. He's got to catch it. The battery maybe is the one, do you work on more than that? Or like, do you look at it? Like you, you're, what you're talking about is, I look at your manager. Every team, every baseball team has got a manager, right? Yeah. So what does the manager actually do? Besides set the lineup, where are you going to bat? Today, mention you're batting fourth, now you're down to eighth. Like what? what That's a good question, Lens. Yeah. It just, uh, gosh, it's, well, a lot of the time it seems like it's relegated to the bench coach. Because it's usually, you'll notice, watch spring training games, for instance. You, the manager never really gets up off of where they're sitting. It's always the bench coach. You know, you're looking down, he'll come, hey, bench, okay, we're done. You don't, the manager really, other than the lineup that comes up, it's usually the bench coach that the guys really, I mean, now, I mean, when we played, I think we had a, we had a manager, bench coach, pitching coach, bullpen coach. So it's coach. individuals Now there's almost. like 30 of them. Exactly. I don't know who goes where. Yeah. It's that way in all sports. Though. Yes. In the NBA, in it's the, the same world? too. Besides, yeah, two besides a shift at a, on a certain batter, is it not an I individual shift sport? Like the trapezoid in hockey. Get rid of it. Let oh no, I agree with that. That's what I'm saying. But I'm saying, what else do they do? What else do they do during a game? Nothing, because it, do it's they me. tell does a, does a coach tell you if you're the center fielder and there's the right fielder? Is he giving you guys a Hand signal? No. It's a community. It's a, it's like playing defense in hockey, or, or you're have. It's a but we have to have five you, guys yeah, on the same page. You go over and, and go over. Right? You have your advanced meetings, right? Of yeah. What guys do and everything else. But for the most part, you'll know if a guy's oh he's not throwing as hard as he normally is. Okay, I know I got to move over. So then I got to communicate. Hey, hard bloods, I'm moving over yeah. because I notice this. Right? The analytics can't see that. My manager really analytics. can't see that. But we, it's a, it's a feel, right? You develop. Yeah. An understanding of knowing it's like a Fact. pass, a no look pass, because I know that you're going to be in that spot. So, so listen, Mitch, there, there's a new rule that you 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 can't be out of the batter's box. Oh, gosh, dog. Yeah. Don't how, how is that to you going to impact? Oh, the, that's the what game. I was wondering, oh, too. God, yeah. time. Are you talking about the clock? Yeah. Oh, the, yeah. Sh the shot the clock. clock. Yeah. And yeah. are yeah. they going the with the bigger bags? Bigger, yeah, they're the size of pizza okay. boxes. There you go. Talk about those two things. Oh, yeah. gosh. It, it's only a matter of time before they do the dual bases at first. Softball, you know yeah. what I mean, one in the back? Yeah. Uh, gosh, I don't. 
the purity of the you game. You put a shot clock on uh, in baseball. Well, the, the clock there should be one in hockey on three on three. Is Emily okay? just wants to go well, home it, from what, the game. She knew she was going to chime in. Listen, M. M. So it's going to speed the game up. That's that's my that, I got my answer. By the way, over there in the peanut gallery is Emily Jones, who actually works for the Texas Rangers, yes. and is saying this is yes. a bunch of bullshit. That the <laughs> so, yeah, Emily. so here's Emily, the, come up here. So here's the problem. So you talk about the the the, the pitch clock, right? The pitchers have so yeah. much time. So apparently, I'm just finding come out on. if they want a different here she new, comes. If they want a new baseball, they throw the, the, they the, can throw the baseball out and oh. the clock restarts. I'll just talk into Luddy's mic. Okay. Okay. You you and Menchie exactly. can go at it. No, so, I. It the game needs to speed up. Yeah. It's too boring. Yeah. It's too boring. All right. Hot and this will speed it up. Let's think about this. You're sure. When, when I, was, when, I look in the minor league. He just you waved you off. He just off waved the, you off. off, 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 off the game time. My clock already went off. I'm done. Right. <laughs> no, go ahead, Mitch. It's not the first time we've gone in an so argument. So when I was go playing, ahead. it it was baseball's going. They had stuff in the in the crowd. At this point in life, it's an amusement park. Ooh, there's a baseball game going on. It's they, they've gotten away from the act. You're, why are you there? Are you there for the entertainment? Of Have you been to a professional sporting event outside of baseball? Have you been to a Mavericks game? Do you know the sensory overload that's taking place in the NBA and the NFL and every other professional sport? It's called keeping up with the times. You've got to adapt. People do not want to go watch a slow M, ass baseball game. M. I'm sorry. Yeah. Spin it, baby. <laughs> I'm dead. Thank you. Okay, I have to say, like, she's had this building for a while. It's not just you. Clearly. She's not it's attacking everybody. you. Everybody's like, oh. Yes, yeah, she is. This baseball season every, around the corner. This is not the way the game was supposed to be played. Shut this is her thing. up. The this game is, is supposed game to, right no, here. but the game. This is the mom the game. The game is supposed to be entertaining. <laughs> well, it's how this in your ear right now. Guys <laughs> grabbing their jump and stepping out of the box and adjusting their gloves and all that stuff is not entertaining. Say glove or jump? Get both. both. What adjusting they? their gloves. Adju get in the box. Take Never a mind. pitch, swing at it, or don't. I was. Period. I was End that of guy. story. But now, you were. Not everyone, I know. though. No more Garcia Parra, for instance. It's way too slow. I get it. It's preseason. But I'm sorry, bitch. There aren't many baseball purists left. Right, you have to realize this. Fuck out. No, I'm, I'm, I love I'm, it because you guys are both I'm right not, in the middle. I'm not standing. I'm not standing out. And listen, how has it worked so far? Is what I my mean, question. We have a very small sample size yeah. in the minor leagues and so far in spring training. And it's shaving off like 20 to 25 minutes off of games. That go. to me is a good thing because that means you're cramming whatever was taking place before when you ha didn't have a pitch clock. Right. It's condensing it. And so you're getting the same stuff, you're just getting it in a shorter amount of time. Not sure if everyone's aware, but everyone's attention span is way down these days. And so you have to find a way to adapt as a sport. You have to give the people, the vast majority of the people, and in this case, the younger generation, something to look at. You think the players are going to adjust to it? Though. Yes, they will. Of course they will. And they're they're going to find they're ways smart. to cheat. Yeah. Okay, so, base, so, so, so the pitchers, they can... If they get rid of a baseball, the clock restarts. Who's to say they don't like 25 straight baseballs because they want to they want to take their time? That ball sucks and get rid of it. Who's to say they don't do that? They'll Who's adapt. to say the game seven of the World Series doesn't come down to a three, just like the game the other day, three, two, two outs, bottom yeah. of the ninth. We're in week we two of the box. All right, the game's over. You Kevin, just we're in week two of spring training. Give yourself yeah. and all the That's other baseball the players question, out there okay. more credit. You will Here. adapt. They will, they, will yeah. the they will figure it out. That's the They will figure it out. The next thing they're going to do to hockey, they're going to throw five pucks on the ice. Don't bring hockey in this right now. We got a good thing going here. Hockey's in it. No, it will. Hockey's fast. Shit's going on all the time. Too many, Basketball is fast. Plays, too many stops. Everybody too many wants everything so fast. Fast, yeah. Why not? Hurry up. Let's, Hurry up. Let's take uh, the soccer games 90 minutes. Let's condense it to 40 minutes and you better go. That's it. Let's condense everything. Yeah. You know what you're doing right now? You're talking to me and you should be talking to Em right now. No, you know, he's I'm, talking to I me. I don't want to go through hard. Oh, he, he <laughs> to I just want her to yell back through right hard. Here, hell, don't worry about me. Me. Okay, don't I'm worry done. That's me. all I have to okay. say. I got to get this thing back on the rails. Thank you, Emily. Thanks, Emily. What? Hot take, I think, Emily. Emily, thanks. Coming in. Thanks, Emily. I think. Glass of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Blasting Kevin about his baseball takes. That's what you get here on the Dub Network with do all this. of these people. We should do this one weekly. We should do a moves. weekly show. I, I we should do a much. weekly show just, here. Every time um, we have one roamer that just throws around and just yeah. get, stirs the pot. Right. Like on the Maury Povich show. Yeah. Where, I uh, think she wasn't even supposed to be here. <laughs> <laughs> when she comes she over wasn't even supposed she to take, be here. 
the takeover. Yes. It was the takeover. So you should start doing Sometimes paternity tests. you just tests have that crazy like that. fan that you can't control. Yes. That's Emily today. Um, and by the way, Emily's mom game appearance brought to you today by Panther City Lacrosse. They are some friends of our show on the mom game. Um, we're so happy to be working with them. Have, did y'all know there's a professional lacrosse team in Fort Worth? I did not. Muggs and I grew up in the lacrosse era. I don't think it was not. Emily and I went. Yeah, you're, you're from Canada. You're fine. I'm you know. from Wisconsin. It's yeah. the same thing. Yeah. It, it's a lot of fun. Canada. Emily Part and I Florida. They didn't have any. Uh, yeah, that yeah. Is. <laughs> we grew um, up in lacrosse. I sir. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, keep checking um, your watch. You. Panther City Lacrosse, thank you so much for being a part of this as well. All of this. Um, there are some upcoming games if you want to go check it out at Dickey's Arena, March 4th, March 24th, April 1st, April 21st, all at 7 o'clock. It's easy. Here's it's fun. There is sensory overload, a lot of things to look at at those lacrosse, lacrosse games. It's awesome. It's, it's great. fun. I grew up watching Philadelphia Wings. It's, it's hockey, but they without sticks. Yeah. They run around, well, they paint each other with sticks. It's awesome. Let's talk. I hockey. love it. Let's talk hockey. I love, I love, say, I love to play the lacrosse. It's awesome. Wait, Absolutely. I, I, well, you can answer that if you want. I do have another hockey question, too. Stars okay, Harp, what did you say? How does hockey what? Need to change, if they do it at all. There's been so damn many changes. Yeah. It needs to go back a little bit to old school. I don't like some of the rules and the stoppages in play and the offsides rule, and, and we give them so much time, the game slows down. It's getting to be like baseball. Can like we talk about the All-Star game? No, I'm just talking in general. I, you know what? I watched it. I didn't understand. <laughs> you watch what? Wait, the, 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 the NHL All Star game. game maybe in the worst. No, don't watch that. Yeah, don't watch I that. I did. I, it was. Wait on. a second. Are you talking about the NHL yes. All Star game and the NBA? Both of them. The NHL, NBA. Both NBA both is horrible. Yeah. Whatever yeah. happened to competing? Awful. You want to awful. compete against the best? Why don't they compete? Points. Same with hockey. They make too much money. Is well, that what it's come to? Let's just not like make it about basketball can well, play about the, the too bottom much. Bottom line is, games have played too many games. Not we. Yeah, we are. You got a mouse in your pocket? You must have a mouse in your fucking pocket. No, I'm not overpaid. Guy, well, no, as hockey players, basketball oh, players. Wait a second. As sports you know what guys. That, wait a second. Wait we, a second. We all make more what, than enough money. What's the average? Uh, Ten million. Ten million. Yeah. You know what the best player in the game in in. Wait, hang on. I gotta get this straight. Nobody can hear this. You know what the best player in the in the NHL makes? What? Twelve point five. Well, they should have chosen a different one sport. Player. Yeah, they should have. They should have chose something else. Well, I don't think they get to choose. That's your union's yeah, you fault. Wait That's a second. That's your union's fault. There They're all white kids. Hey, they can't play basketball <laughs> for God's sakes. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Luke is a white guy. Yeah, but he's got a gift. Yeah. No, I'm saying in hockey, they can't. I mean, what, what? Wayne Gretzky didn't have a gift. Yeah, and you know what Wayne Gretzky made? He made like seven, eight million at his prime. I guess you're right. Right Lush. now, the, the highest guy is making twelve point five. But you know what it is? It's about viewers, right? It's Absolutely. about viewers. I mean, and I think NBA. What's the number one sport in the world? It isn't basketball. It's football. That's. I think it's soccer. Soccer. soccer, soccer. soccer. That, I think yeah. it's soccer. I would, I would agree. I, I would think agree. NASCAR's in there somewhere. Hey, look at NBA the money. There, soccer. There. Soccer. Soccer. You're right. Soccer's yeah. the one. Yeah. Those guys are making a lot. Yeah. I mean, you got you got. LeBron's making what 60, 70 a year, somewhere in the neighborhood. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Endorsements and Not just else. to play basketball. Okay, that's yeah. everything combined. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so the best the best player in the NHL is making twelve point five. Well, actually, McKinnon now is making a hundred thousand more. So twelve point seven. Not even thirteen. That's the best player in the game is making that. Mm -hmm. But it's not a top. And again, I don't know if it's a top four sport because bowling's in there, basketball. Baseball, football, NASCAR. I mean, when you want to talk about viewership, it's it's not there. It's not, and and I'm sure revenue has to do with everything, right? Yeah. yeah of and course. the salary. What's the salary cap in the NBA? The salary cap in the NBA. There is there isn't a salary cap. Exactly. If what's the salary cap at... there? <laughs> oh, she left. No, not not millions in, in of baseball? dollars. Like, in, oh, I don't even know what it is now. Two yeah. two hundred fifty million, maybe. I don't know. Two seventy. NHL is eighty four million. Yeah. 84 and a half, and it may yeah. go up to 100 within the next Who three, knows four years. what the NBA, they're negotiating right now for a new agreement. A bigger one. A bigger one, absolutely. Yeah. Who knows what it's going to be? I don't think anybody knows the number right now, but who's going to be humongous. Who's the best well-conditioned athletes in their respective sport on the planet? Hockey players? Nope. Not well-conditioned? So I don't think players. so. Soccer I, players. I agree. Yeah. Soccer, then I would go with basketball. Yeah. Absolutely. I would go with those two. I, I don't that has any doesn't have anything to do with salary. Where, where do you put baseball? Oh Lord Jesus. <laughs> 
I, I love the spring training. I love the pitchers and shit. They, they, they run from the mound out to the fence, and they run back. What, what do these guys do that hit the ball? They get in the box, and they hit, and they hit, and... There you go. They Luke go for a sauna. We don't get, God today. bless you. No, no, this is my guy. No, <laughs> seriously. God bless you. No, no, I, I watch him warm up. Just enjoy it. Just keep yucking no, it up, Joe, guys. This is my guy. Thanks, Em. Kevin alone. We love Kevin. We love Emily. We oh love God. baseball. Yeah. We See, love the problem the is I grew up playing hockey, so I know the mentality of how yes, it is, of what, what they go through. Basketball, I'm a short white kid. I had no chance playing basketball. I but played soccer. Play? I played soccer. No, I no, I didn't play. I just put it on the court. I I've yeah. learned. I've I've learned now because I've you know about understanding body. Come on, Julie, shit get it back else, on the rails. I'm trying, man. Oh, I'm we're just. <laughs> we're sorry, Juice. You're I just. Fine. I mean, I think as far as just being ready, I think. Well, I think one of the biggest things in sports nowadays is the amount of turnover. There's no more loyalty between teams and players. How many guys are jumping ship, chasing something, right? How many. Right, going from team where, to team, trying to build go? these power we're teams. About we're talking that's about that, right, that, that's the and how do fans get? How do fans enjoy it? If, if my favorite player is leaving, my favorite player is Derek Harper, he's gone. All right, wait, Julie yeah. and I have no idea what sport you went to. Went, went to basketball. Oh, you did basketball. Well, yeah. the sports teams and sports in, in, general. in general. I mean, how many guys jump ship all the time? They're chasing, yeah. building sports super teams, about. right? Sports in general. Sports in general, yeah. right? Bloods, I'm talking about just being fans and the money you're talking about, right? Yeah. The jumps from. Do the fans actually follow the money or do they follow this the action? They follow the money. They do? Social media. Okay. okay. Fans follow the money to an extent. Fans want their teams to win, right? Yeah. Um, and that brings us back to the final topic. I want to ask you, and you guys can weigh in too. Um, the Dallas Stars right now are still top of the conference, top of the Central Division, but yep. they're not looking very good they are struggling in overtime bloody that, you know what You're, is that mental what no, do they need to do but let's not worry about overtime so much because there is no overtime in the playoffs it, the whole okay overtime, yeah <laughs> could they have collected five six more points yes what does that do that that gets in the the number one and they're going to play the whole deal with the western and we're only talking about the western conference yeah okay so the western conference is different this year than the eastern conference the Eastern Conference and the NHL is a juggernaut. Mm -hmm. Okay, so everybody's talking about draft. It, it is the trade era right now. Be careful with all this stuff because there, everything that's going on in the East right now, and there, are, what, what? Let's put it this way: we want to talk about the Dallas Stars. Worry about getting out of your conference. Yeah, that's it. Get to the finals. That's all you got to do. <laughs> and so. I love that. We don't need to worry about overtime. Yeah. Well, no, you don't have to. Because of the playoffs. Overtime's done. There yeah. is no more overtime. Yeah. And and if, they've lost, what, thir uh, whatever it is, 13 games. They went to OT. Yeah. The loser point is what we call it. Right. They're still right? collecting points. It doesn't matter anymore. We don't have that once we get into April. Okay. Let me change my question. Okay. From what you've seen from this Dallas Stars team, They're can team. they do something in the playoffs this year? In the playoffs? Yeah. In general, in the first, second round? Yep. Absolutely. Playoffs. Absolutely. Now, I don't That's know right. when we're going to actually Playoffs. air this show, but this is the deadline as of Friday. Yeah. Is the deadline. Everything's else been done up till now. Jim Neal, who I think, I'm going to tell you, if you look at everything that's been done in the last year and a half, the guys that have been brought in here, the guys that have been signed, how Jim has handled this, he, he's, I don't know if they technically call him a lame duck. You know, he's got, he's got another year. But look at what he's done. Yeah. He deserves Mr. Gillardi to talk to him and have a conversation about moving forward. Um, because he, I, I'll go to Wyatt Johnson. For instance. The kid could have been sent back after nine games this, yeah. this year. He had like 16 goals. Yeah. Good decision. Brought in Marshman. I, I, I know that he's not, he's got like a 25, 26 game drought going on. He's a playoff kind of player. He's good. So there's a lot of things going on here with this team, but the beast is in the East. And so, but what you have to do is just get to that final. So how do you get to the final? It doesn't really matter who you're playing in the first round. In a way it does. I'm not really, I don't, I'm not digging the whole two versus three, one, eight. I'll, I would rather do it a different way. But anyway, is your question is where are they going to be at? Can they do something in the playoffs? Yeah, of course they can. Because everybody everybody in the West can do something in the playoffs. Yeah. But have some other teams made some bigger moves? And I'm talking about the West. Yeah, maybe. But 
I will say this. I had a conversation about two to three weeks ago, and, and my my feeling is sometimes when you have a a team that you believe in that's been going on all year long and there's a chemistry that builds in there, you walk into the locker room sometimes, and you know what? We believe in you guys. Yeah. We, we might make a minor tweak here and there. Which they did. And they brought in Dadanov or Dadanov or Dadanov or whatever, yeah. however you want to call pronounce it now. Daddy. Yeah. And yeah. So, so little daddy, big daddy, whatever you want to call him, he had a great opening game, right? Yep. He's played on, this is either his fifth or sixth team. He's had 465 games in the NHL. Let's see what he is. Yeah. And everybody needs a fresh start. They they moved Gariano yep. to Montreal. He had an unbelievable first game. He had seven or eight shots in his first game. He's flying in Montreal with the end group. So got a new guy that moves over. That's good. It's all about depth. And I think it's about how you build your lines. Yeah. So and what I would do, which I have nothing to do with. I would take the last uh, 10 or 8, 7 games, and I, I'm going to give Joe Pavelski five of them off. Okay. He, he, Load he, management, huh? Well, yeah. I, I, just, I just think that... You just said he'd give Joe Pavelski five games off. I would. Before I, the playoffs. Before the yeah. playoffs. Joe's also almost 40. Yeah, he's old. No, yeah. and, but, but he doesn't play like it. He plays with two he's, kids. He's not... Plays right, with the two right now. Kids. He's struggling like, a little. Yeah, but yeah. you know what? He's 38 years old, for fuck's sakes. Relax. Everybody relax. Don't yell He's at a me. a playoff guy. Yeah. Give him a little bit of a break. Give him some rest in the playoffs, you know, and but give him three, four games. No NHL guy wants to take any time off. Yeah. They, they, don't, they want to play. I would force him. I would say, Joe, I don't, I don't even, take for, some time off. For the NBA, I don't even think it's the players. I think it's more the organization calling themselves protecting the product. More you know, or less. You know, I think all guys, I, I really do in sports, I think all guys want to play. I really do. I th if you had a choice, you'd rather be out performing. Of course. But I think the sophistication of medicine and drugs. trainers, well, let's drugs, call it what it is CD, analytics. Yeah, analytics. No, that, analytics. Is anal, what it is. yeah, yeah. Oh. Wow. But listen, that that's the numbers. That's the, why guys, the guys sit upstairs. Out. Yeah. They don't sit out because they don't want to play. The guys that sit yeah. out they're being persuaded to sit out. You By think? management. No question. Because yeah. the numbers yeah. say they need a break, right? They don't go they I don't, don't even know if it's no. that. They're calling themselves saving themselves. No, that's themselves. where it's coming from now. But the listen, top. Mitch, they're saving themselves for something bigger down the line. Kawhi okay. Leonard, Paul George, those guys. Are saving themselves and some for the plugs. playoffs, so to speak. As crazy as it sounds. Well, if it pays off for a better product in the postseason, maybe that's something that more people can get behind. I, I, could. I don't. I, can, I don't like it. I want. At all. I want. But think about it. Uh, okay, you, we were afraid that yeah. we might lose our Let's jobs. Be, we're on the record. Harp doesn't like it. I oh, know. I don't. Facts. Well, I, I, yeah, but I don't look either. Look I'm trying to be convinced because like, it's the way it is, yeah. right? It Everybody's happened. talking about how things have changed, right? What Gretzky, the gr the records that he That's put up changed. in the era where you could hook, do everything the hell you wanted to, right? He still put up numbers. Now they've turned it into figure skating, and guys aren't putting numbers up anywhere near what Gretzky did. <laughs> yeah. Baseball, thirty wins. Well, twenty five years ago was, was the standard. McDavid's there. Twenty years. goals in sixty one games. Okay. Not not Gretzky numbers. That we're but, never going to see. You know that. what I mean? Though? We're not going to see. Where that. you could yeah. and, the, and the game police itself. Baseball yeah. now. The, the game now, is softer now. All of it, I think, in general. But is it more entertaining? Yeah. I, from I, I can speak from my standpoint. From you, you don't watch a ton of NHL hockey. I know that. I don't. But you do. Is it more entertaining now? Damn straight, it is. So, to a, basketball, to an extent, is, yes, I know that. But it's still that. I'm. But you're still. You got a little old school in you. Like, the, like we talked, the trapezoid. Let the goalies a part of the game. Let them be. A part I know, of but you're 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 getting down on a goaltender for God's sake. But the game overall, that's not is fair. it not fast and exciting? Now I'm the dinosaur, and I'm like, this no, game it, it, is good it is and fun. Exciting, but I still like the I like the players being able to dictate the game. Where well, that'll happen in the playoffs a little bit more yeah. than, than ever. So, yeah. since, since you just threw me under the bus, Lutz, <laughs> and said I don't watch hockey, I don't know shit about hockey. What makes a great hockey player? How about that? Uh, hockey sense. Hockey sense, I like it. Well, there's basketball sense, right? Absolutely. I would assume there is. Talking about how you can yeah. instincts. You can tell. You know where it is. Like you can say it's never sport. It's in here. Yeah, it, it's it's especially in, in hockey. I would think. And there's there's, I don't know about I don't know how many players are in the NBA. I, I yeah, couldn't tell. Four hundred and thirty. That's it. Yeah. How that's many it. teams? How many thirty teams? 
So there's he can't take his shoes off. Eight, eight, no, I'm right just now. saying eight to ten on a team. <laughs> eight somewhere around no, there. It's eight. Tw it's twelve. Twelve oh. to fifteen. Okay. Yeah. So in the NHL, there's thirty-two teams, and there's approximately. I mean, the, the roster size is twenty-three. We don't have to get it perfect. But, but yeah. what I'm saying, well, I, I can. I'm. Oh, precise. I know you. Yeah. Yeah. So, You're but, an but in reality. In reality, of the hundreds of thousands of kids that play around the world and the country that want to play, there's 750 players that play. Yeah. So reality is you're not going to play. Right. Yeah. So my whole stance is always like, you got an opportunity to go to school, that, go to that's my fucking speech. school. Yeah. You'll get an education. Yeah. If it doesn't work out. You got 1% of making it. That's right. Yep. If that. That's what it is. Yeah. That's what it is. And we have three of you guys here on this set, and that's why oh, this Julie's show trying to wrap it up right now. is so cool. <laughs> three people that made it, right? I mean, that's really cool, and I love getting all of you guys together yeah. because you offer a perspective that we can't get anywhere else. Show me another show locally that's as cool as this conversation that can't we just me. had. Um, lastly, before we go, oh, don't a, add a no little more. quick um, – preview about what's coming up on your show coming up on the big head pod what do you want to do with it um coming up on harps court who are you targeting who do you want to have on same with suds with leds let's give the people a little preview and then we'll wrap things up i just fly by the seat of my pants yeah ever available yes it's just it just depends i know the guys now that are coaching their their the season's starting and, and we understanding what they go through i'm not going to bother those guys that are playing it so it's just a matter of sitting down you know, just listening to, but listen to stuff and hearing that. It's going to have me on uh, so no. can argue. Uh, it's going to be amazing. <laughs> oh it's going to be, be remote because I, I can hang up on her if I don't like what she says. <laughs> this is going to get no, he, heated. He's being candid. I, I think the biggest challenge to shows and doing a podcast yeah. is getting people in. Yeah. You know, the scheduling of guys. That, that's the biggest challenge. Interesting guys. Right. I mean, you can always go and get. You know, Dale Ellis. Dale, I've known for... Who's that? Dale Ellis <laughs> went to course. Tennessee. I want somebody else drafted. to answer that question besides you. Who's that guy? <laughs> right. I don't know. Dale, Dale Ellis. Ellis. Yep. Yeah. I know the name, but... Uh, so it. your answer is I have no idea. No. Yeah. Julie, who was that? Well, Harper, can you answer right. it? Right. Okay. Yeah, I can certainly answer it. Dale and I were drafted. Show. Yeah. yeah. Dale and I were drafted the same year, 83-84, by the Dallas Mavericks. Dale went on to win three-point shooting contests, played in the finals. Okay. But he doesn't talk. Yeah. He's one of my best friends. And I'm like, can you talk? Can, you, can, can, I, can I, say I throw something? out Jamie Bendia? <laughs> Who is that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's like the Dale Ellis yeah. guy. Yeah. I guarantee you, though, here in the Metroplex, tons of guys know who Dale Ellis is. Yeah. He was a sharpshooter. One of those, one of those guys. Like a that, sniper? Was yeah. he in the military? Yeah. A sniper as far as throwing that bucket, that ball in the bucket. <laughs> ask, you know, to ask Tom. <laughs> That, that's who we need, our, our guy. Yeah. That's who we need. Who is Dale Ellis? Tom? That's awesome. Great, great outside shooter. Yeah. Did he play the Super Bowl? Oh, Sonics? good job repeating yeah. everything. That's Harper what I know. Is. I got his basketball card. <laughs> See, I knew I knew that no, name. No, Tom, yeah. Tom okay. really knows. So, so, Luds, who are you wanting to get on? And I do think we but need to I, continue to, to do add, more of this. I did not answer your question. Okay. I am rooting for, I'm trying to get Jimmy King, uh -huh. a member of the Fab Five, back in the... 80s, 90s. 92, 93. Yeah, 1780 or 1880? No, no. <laughs> I am at all. <laughs> right. <laughs> but listen, I'm trying to get him on to talk about that experience and all that went on through, through their run yeah. in college basketball. That'd be cool. Yeah. I always think you should just grab some of those current Mavericks, too. You're there. You're yeah. right there. Yeah, but they, they don't want to. You know, I think we, they would. I think they respect I know they you and will. love you. And they, they, they definitely you're will. You're already there. It's you know the as family. well as I know, trying to get people to do things. It's all about. It's all channel. about timing. I know. It's, it's if they'll all about do interviews timing. with Channel Five, Channel Four, whatever, they'll yeah. do it with you. You're Don't, we're forward. trying to do forty minutes, and they're doing. Uh, you know, point Channel Five is getting three minutes. That's true. Right. You can do so hard. Let me ask you. Ask how, me. how difficult, and you too, Menchie, getting current guys. I'm talking about the twenty-five to twenty-six. Not current, but they've been in the. They've been doing it for four yeah. or five years. How. I, I, I don't know, I, well, not major, because to Julie's point, you're around the guy. Yeah. So you can put a bug in their ear. But it's difficult, right, to get oh, them to no. commit now. Without Old school doubt. guys are like, Always. yeah, harp on that. Ready to go. What do you need, dude? Yeah. Right, they, they yeah. Want, I can get Charles Oakley, John. Totally yeah. yeah. different. Yeah. 
It is. I think it they'd is. be more willing than you guys realize. And there is a person whose job is to facilitate these interviews. That's yeah, built yeah. in with the team right now. So call up Scooter. He would help you. I um, need to. Yeah, yeah, I think you should. And just I, say, the, hey, those are who great do you think resources. would come sit with me? But you know yeah. what, Julie? The way I, uh, not, yeah. not, I'm not speaking for those guys or yourself. Sometimes then it feels like for them, it, it's an obligation. You know, this is part of your deal. We yeah, want you to talk to, get to those I want, yeah. I, I those want, I look for people that go, yep, I'll do yeah. it. You know what I mean? Well, like, and they I might be there, though, and you're not asking. No, I, oh, no well, I kind of go through guys. That, yeah. But I just don't want it to be like, oh, yeah, okay, I'm supposed to do this. Yeah. I just want guys to do it. And I'm sure it's the same deal. Oh, I get yeah. it. I oh, get it. Right. Yeah. But, but I think there's some of those guys on the current day teams that would just be like, yeah, Craig yeah. Ludwig, are you kidding me? Yeah. Derek Harper, I'd love to come sit with you instead of all these other yeah. fools that are at my practice every day that I don't know that didn't play the game. Well, one, I think they would love it. You guys need to give yourselves a little bit more credit for these guys wanting to come talk to you. I just, I, you know what, Jill, I don't mean to cut you, but. You're fine. I don't think one. It's only one. the 107th time in the course of this show. Well, We're I'm good. just apologizing. Well, I knew what I was getting myself into, and I'm cool with it. I don't think one guy not being on the show is what it's all about. Mm -hmm. I, I think the beat goes on. One guy that doesn't do it, you can find somebody that will and oh, be sure. entertaining enough that people want to listen yep. and check it out. Yep. Well, I love what all three of you are doing with your respective shows. We love what Herman Marshall is doing. Herman Marshall, here let's give Wiley it up there. To Herman Marshall. Marshall. Yep, to the Marshall. Everything they make is delicious. Grab hey, some. Hey, Ryan, Have for God's sake, thing. we're cheering to you. Thank Marshall. you, Ryan. Yeah, Damn it, thank you for having us. I think now we're all going to go do what we've been thinking about doing for the last hour, and that is going to drink whiskey and have a little fun out Wiley. here in Wiley. Thank you all so much for we're, tolerating we're, all of us. We're, we're looking for an Uber sponsor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, do, right we, we will be safe. Spot. We will be safe. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to all of these shows. Love, you got to give the address. <laughs> Don't drink and drive. We got to cut him off. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't have two in one. <laughs> Do not drink and drive, motherfuckers. Oh, man. Okay. Hey. <laughs>